Okay, everyone. It's uh, Safe Cafe number seven. I'm David Lassoff. I'm your host with Tim Coomber, my co-host. Hi, Tim. How you doing, bro? I'm very good, my man. Very good. Excited about tonight's show. Demons. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Tim, I want you. I want to just go right to you and tell us a little bit about these guys who are going to be on here tonight with us, and uh, yeah, and then introduce them to us, would you? Well, tonight we've got a um, very special guest, the, um, the very delectable Cy and Dan from the band Ceiling Demons. Um, <laughs> hello, boys. Hello. <laughs> um, the Ceiling Demons, um, they've, I've kind of known them about a year. They've been around longer than that. Um, they've uh, had their first album out called Dual Sides. They've been playing some really big gigs. I've seen them grow immensely in the last year. Um, I would recommend everyone in the world to go and check out them on YouTube, to Facebook, or wherever, because these are guys who are genuine, genuinely sound guys who I think are speaking for a whole generation of people that I felt for too long have been underrepresented, and, and I think there's no greater voices than these boys, and I, I really just want to put the show over to these boys, because... It's all right, as we said before, David, me and you talk and we're from a certain age point. These these are the guys, man. These are the guys who – I want them to tell to everybody what it, what it's like to be a band in, you know, in, the, in the 2014, what it's like, and tell everyone because in the world we are at the moment, these – you know, it, it, it's, it's stuck for them. You know, they, they can explain it far better than me. And, and this, the world we're trying to create for this safety network and stuff is is the the world where these boys can express themselves more. We, we were talking this afternoon. Was this, we know too many people that have been creative and have, because of the, the way the world is set up at the moment, they're they're just lost to it all. And it's what we what well, what drives me for the for Network 99. That drives David exactly the same. It's, it's for people like San and Die in the band, so that that. These people can come through, these creative voices. So with no further ado, I'm going to put it across to San, Cy and Dan, who introduce themselves and they can explain and tell them who they are and introduce themselves to the world. Yeah, definitely, guys. Go. Thanks so much, Tim, mate. Thanks so much. Yeah. Hello, Rich, as well, mate. means the word. Yeah, uh, hello, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it's just being, being an artist, you know, it's, it's quite... Uh, it's a bit of a struggle at times to try to do something original, things like that, and, and you know to get it out there, you put in a lot of work, but you, you know you don't see any sort of much benefit like financially. You just you just got to do it for the love, and that's what it's for. But I mean, what what Tim's explained about like Network Ninety Nine things like that, it just seems like. It, just it's where it's where it needs to be pushing. It's where we all need to be pushing, and I really like. I really feel that, and like uh, you know, getting getting plays on like YouTube or you know what whatever people streaming your, your music and things like that. You know, it's it's great and it, it gets it out there, but it doesn't. You don't see any return financially, and I just think it it just seems. It's the same that's where I want to be going to be pushing it, basically. Like uh, for, for the creatives of the world, it just seems. I just uh, put up your Facebook yeah. page. I can yeah. see that. Yeah. Can you see that? <laughs> so everybody, everybody who wants to can go to the Ceiling Demons Facebook page and find out about you guys. Uh, we're just glad that you're here and sharing this, uh, the development of the Safe Cafe. And we make no bones about where we are at in development. And I assure you that we're le le less developed than the ceiling demons. So tell us, tell us about, tell us about, uh, and you know anybody, can, e anyone can break break in on this. But tell us about what did, where did you come up with that name, ceiling demons? Why is that is is that a meaningful name for a band? And tell us in connection with that, tell us about your music and tell us. Uh, is there in what way you think this sort of uh, you know has something to do with what we're doing here? Um. Okay. So, ceiling demons. Start the name. Yeah, <laughs> I'll start the name. Um, it's funny, man. Um, you know, I, 
it, I guess it comes from a lot of uh, creative sort of writing I was doing, and those themes were coming up uh, quite a bit in that. Um, and then looking looking beyond it, man, it's like the ceiling, man. That's like the barrier, man. And the demons, everyone's got the demons, man. Everyone's got demons, so it's like you're moving up, basically, man. The ceiling's the height, <laughs> but the demons hold you back. But the demons also make you want to push things, you know. Mm-hmm. You're working like a demon, man. <laughs> that's, it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And for the for the music, you know, we we're like. I thought when I first heard the name, I thought, you know, because I'm I'm into freedom and yeah. and yeah. Uh, against against the authoritarians, I thought that all these guys that were trying to be over us and tell us how to live and tell us what to do and try to control control things uh, with all the rest of us, you know, that one percent, uh, the t the tyrants of the world. I look at them like as the ceiling demons, you know, the guys that are, you know, trying to trying to stay on top at the expense yeah. of everyone else. So yeah. that was kind of what I had thought a little bit about. Oh, that's, that's, cool, that's, man. that's really good. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll be right. Right is always like open it's interpretation. Yeah. So the way that you know, if we write a song and some, you write it, you write your lyrics talking about. Something that may be personal to you, but you can keep it open for people. People can relate, can relate to it. I really and, liked and read into it. Like I just really liked what you said then yeah. about our yeah. name, uh, how you see it. How you see it? Yeah, it's just yeah. It's, and that's that's sort of like the art of it. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. 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 Well, well, um, you know, Tim, Tim was Tim. Um, ha have you talked to these guys at all yet about? How uh, Studio Ninety Nine and Network Ninety Nine? Yeah, we've been we've they, they they we've been talking about it, and I think we, we, we was we were saying this afternoon that it's it was it was the the freedom of of being able to exp to basically we, we, it's, it's the key we were saying it's like they want to generate and and earn for their generation. We were talking this afternoon about how for someone like me who's been at it for more than for them, it's, you spend so much of your time generating and generating and generating and generating and never getting any comeback for the generation you want to put in. Whereas, I think this is, particularly for me, it, it's, it's my age, but for, for these boys who are starting off, it's they've put so much generation. I mean, you've you, you just put, a, put on their Facebook. I mean, they've got 12,000, you know, 1,000 people view, you know, following them. They have X amount on YouTube. And what... We were saying was it's at the moment they're struggling because they're generating a lot, having a lot of following, but even the people who want to help them have got no way to help them. I mean, I was talking to a, we went to the festival last night, and I was talking to someone, and other than buying an album, how can they help the band out? Whereas on 99, we were saying they love the idea is that they will be able to help the band out, support them out, give them more freedom, give them more, you know, expand their boundaries rather than narrowing them down into small, which. I'm sure they're going to tell you was was more than what they wanted because well, you yeah. know. Yeah, but you know, I mean, here's the beautiful thing about it is that it's the perfect model of what what a genuine free market is about. If the ceiling demons get popular and get lots of people to come listen to their stuff on Network 99 because they've uploaded it there instead of giving it away, they're going to earn. Lots of safe coin. Now I want to I want to continue on that for a second, but I don't want to be rude. Rich Beer is here from New Mexico. Hi, Rich. Hey guys. Hello. How you doing, man? Um, I'm doing fine. I, I was trying to uh, watch earlier, and uh, my wife was uh, conducting an audition, and so we don't have enough bandwidth to do both. So I had to step out for a minute. Um, you know, I wanted to go back to what you were talking about when last the last time we were talking, and I was talking about uh, the idea of um, right having a, a band play, say, out of Scotland, right, and mm -hmm. having people around the world saying, "Hey, on we're going to have a party Friday night, and we're going to uh, be enjoying a live concert 
uh, out of Scotland, and and he could even do a small cover charge for it, which would be given in Safecoin to the band, right? Sure. So, and I, I think that would be a, a kind of a cool way to uh, network. Uh, for bands to network with people around the world is for people around the world to have house parties and 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 put the band on their large screen television, the projector, whatever they happen to have, and and just enjoy it. And everybody can actually you know talk to them after the the deal. They can all everybody can associate with each other. Yeah, like we're, we're talking. I I think it. I think you know I you know again any we speculate about things sometimes when we talk about the safe network because. I think well a couple things I think number one it's better than we can even imagine it I'm sure of that that's just my personal opinion but one thing I think that it is is because it's so innovative in the idea that the network pays safe coin to things that produce data for the network if you follow me um, when when a user, like for example, using your example, let's say we use Studio 99 to uh, to or or you know use the yeah use the broadcast studios of of Studio 99 and and some computer and camera at, on location, and we uh, you know this this small coffee shop. Or this, you know, thing in someone's house where they're, you know, the ceiling demons are playing in front of a crowd of maybe 20 or 30 people, you know, just sitting around drinking coffee or drinking beer, having a good time on on a Saturday night, whatever. And that thing gets uploaded to the ceiling demons channel on Network 99. So. Even if people couldn't see it live, they can see it again. Yeah. And just like they do with this Google Hangout and YouTube. See, I don't know if you know this or not, but the technology already exists. When when we're done this hang up and I stop the broadcast, I do absolutely nothing for that YouTube for that for this hangout to show up as a YouTube video on my channel on YouTube. And I can edit it and ch give it a name. I can do you know, uh, like for example, where I write here, Safe Cafe number seven, welcome musicians and photographers. I'll probably change that to welcome ceiling demons and photographer Rich Beer, you know, so that it gets even more specific in the recording. I mean, in the, you know, now that it's a recorded uh, event. And then, and but the difference is that's where the, that's where the comparison stops because unfortunately, Google Hangouts and YouTube, all we do is help Google. Yeah. We're not helping us. We're helping Google. Well, we're helping us a little, but we're not getting paid for it. You know? And and uh and there are ways to monetize YouTube. <laughs> you know, Google's got a whole big thing about how to monetize your YouTube channel, and it's all about putting ads in front of people's eyeballs. Yeah. You know, for big companies and whoever else wants to pay Google, and who wants to, you know, Google Google's probably making ten cents and is probably paying you a, you know, a hundredth of a cent uh, for whatever advertising they're going to put on your on your YouTube channel. Same thing with like Apple today. The ceiling demons can upload their music to Apple, but how much how much does Apple take out of you? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Take out a bunch. So we had a different idea. We said, you know, the artist should earn 99% of all safe coin revenue, and it's not that's not altruistic. That's self-interested. And what do I mean by that? Well, if if we if 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 Studio 99 and Network 99 become killer applications and own the the real estate of the crypto space because everybody says that's the place to upload your music that's the place to upload your independent films that's the place to go get the best homegrown stuff you can find anywhere and that's what I think what we're talking about with the safe network it's it's taking it out of the hands of corporations and other people and and just putting entertainment and putting art in 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 uh, the way it was always supposed to be, where people just doing their own thing, and 
if we provide the tools, um, I know Rich has some thoughts on this about, about photographers and stuff. How would that? How would some of this stuff apply to the world of photography, Rich? Uh, the way I see it, if you uh, th think about it, you, when you can upload, and this is from the video that uh, Tim shared uh, about one of the applications that would be offered, which is uh, similar to a Dropbox, but yet a private key uh, is needed to access it, and um, it's available to anybody with that key. So uh, in terms of photography, uh, we find ourselves doing work for people who don't want to share those pictures with anybody else, you know, weddings and, and the like. And, and being able to have a place where you can store all of that, where you're not using your own uh, drive space and you just send it out into a network where it's encrypted and safe because it's uh, on a redundant system. They don't have to worry about paying fees in order to have it hosted or have it tampered with, and, and it's always accessible. You know, perhaps generations later, it'll still be there encrypted and as digital dust, and you know, the, with the right keys, somebody can go in there, oh, look at pictures of grandpa and grandma when they got married. You know, but the idea is just to have something available uh, as a tool for photographers where they can uh, upload uh, something secure for somebody else, and as long as that person has the key to get in there, they're always accessible and can download it from wherever they're at. And unlike uh, some of the other uh, other places like uh, Flickr, Flickr I use it all the time. It's a great thing, but it costs it costs me money to put it there. They don't pay me to put it there. Uh huh. Uh, so. And and I guess it's not you know again I'm not a I'm not a uh, a coder but I know it would be the simplest of functions like yes no kind of of switch if you will a button that would make something either public or private so you don't have to you you, you always have the option of having just something private you don't have to have it public. But of course, like if you're like the ceiling demons, you want everybody to be able to access your music, so that would be publicly accessible. So uh, uh, also really along the line, go ahead. Oh, along the lines, as a photographer, is having something similar to uh, Flickr, but having it in such a way that it's it's a worldwide gallery where anybody can upload their photos, and mm -hmm. um, that sounds you know and having different sections, those that want to uh, maintain a certain amount of supposed rights they have over their pictures. I don't I don't ever I don't believe that with my own photography. I all my photography is available for anybody to use. They can download the original size. Uh, I just don't have that idea that some in in today's digital world, uh, you know you can say it's copyrighted, but somebody can still take it, tweak it a little bit and use it. No big deal. Uh, but the point being, if you had a uh, something, a, a worldwide system where everybody can upload their pictures no matter what they are and I always go back to journalism because I, to me that's a really great aspect of it. People can put their stuff up about what's going on around the world and, and nobody can say oh that's too graphic take it down. You know I'm sorry that's reality you don't have to look at it. You can have warnings if you're if you want to be nice and you know it, you have to have a strong stomach for this or what but you know it's there and it doesn't you know nobody can say oh that, that's too much for uh, sensible people to see. No, no it's reality. Which yeah, is, well, oh, go ahead. No, it's, um, which is important because it's when you, well, as I said when we were talking about some of the shows before, but when you're dealing like the boys are, or like myself do, or even Rich, or anyone who's, who can, tends to be creative and has that element inside them, they want the ability to express themselves. When we, we were talking last night after the festival that so many bands are, are clipped their wings by what they have to do. You know, they're, they're told they have to fit a certain market or have to fit a certain rules. And, and, and like Richard was saying, we all want the freedom to put what we want to, what, what out, as we were saying last week, whether it offends people or not. I mean, the, the San and Di won't write a lyric and think, oh, is this going to upset X, Y, and Z? They just put it out because to them, it's what they live for. I mean, I'm sure that they will tell you more that... The well... <laughs> Yeah, I think I think I think some people get. I mean, I'm not knocking this. I think some people, uh, you know, artists, especially artists. I think to be an artist is to sometimes provoke and offend uh, the sensibilities of people, shake them up a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, good that, good art should provoke a, a reaction or a feeling or something. And sometimes you know, it's not always a pleasant feeling, but that's art. Good art should 
Bluetooth. Hey, hey, do you got? I, I'm gonna ask you a question. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Do you guys have your masks with you? Uh, kicking about somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'll go. I'll go hard, can you go hard. grab them and and, 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 and put them on and let people let people get get spooked by that a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> but but my point is is that I mean I'm bringing something up. Look look, you know I come from a different generation and and. You know, I'm not gonna like music sometimes that is is not what I'm used to seeing. Go ahead, go ahead for a few minutes. I got, I, I just, I just want to see it in real time. I've seen them on videos, but this is this is an interesting concept. You guys, look at this stuff, man. This is these are amazing masks. Very cool. Look at that. That's him. That's the one. <laughs> awesome man. But well, t t tell tell the tell tell David what the concept of the mask is and what was what was the thought behind it. Well, <laughs> so yeah, everyone wears a mask, man. You know. Um, and I think I think there's there's an Oscar, there's an Oscar Wilde quote where it's like um, like man like is I don't know, I'll I'll find it I'll let's just find it so I can quote it right like. Cool. You well, why you're, that's cool. Why you're finding it? I I wanted to I wanted to just say one thing. The the idea. I mean, who's going to be the offensive police? You yeah. know, is that what we want in the future? Is that there's somebody who's telling us what uh, is offensive and what? Who gets to decide that exactly. something is? You know, so. I think I think freedom has a cost, and it has to do with exactly what we're talking about. Will the safe network you be used for what people consider to be good and not good? Yes, that's a fact. You can't avoid that. You know, will people who use the safe network, or will the safe network itself, get accused of harboring pedophiles and? drug dealers and mobsters and terrorists, you better believe it. So in a sense, if you love freedom, you have you have to have a stomach for understanding you have a that stomach for the some truth. people are going to like it. It's, it yeah, it's, 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 that's what's real about it, isn't it, really? It's, it's mm -hmm. like a, st a stomach for the truth. Like the, the Oscar Wilde, Wilde quote, which I was on about, it's man is least himself when he talks to his own person. Give him a mask, and he will tell you the truth. And I think that's basically what it is, though. Like. I think that that's I think that that's cool because, in a sense, you're you're creating anonymity, and mm. and the idea of the, one of the one of the great ideas I think about the safe network is this idea of of the ability to be anonymous, yeah. which means that somebody can say things that he wants to say without fear. And so you know things like, for example, whistleblowing. When there's somebody who's done something, you know, that somebody thinks is wrong or evil, or uh, you know, that hurts other people, uh, somebody can stand up and say, "Wait a minute, these guys are doing this, and they should, you know, let's get together and and do something about it." Yeah. They don't have to, you know, you don't have to lay down and take it anymore. Anonymity makes that possible. One of the things that I advocate is something I call the 99% revolution. It's the idea that people can peacefully take on walking away from uh, authoritarian systems because there's an al a real alternative in the world. And that's what the safe coin economy will become. Now, I don't know exactly when, but I do know that when there are I do know this you know um, there are nations did you know like for example where I live I live in a country that has about eight million people in it and we have our own currency we have our own economy uh, that's all that's all there is in Israel is eight million people in Singapore there's like about three and a half four million people they have a very strong uh, economy and, and it's based on the Singaporean dollar. So nobody can tell me that when 250 million people worldwide, which is like a quarter of the number of people that use Facebook, 
no one, no one can tell me that that safe coin economy won't be a strong, viable, alternative economy, and people will be able to buy and sell. You know, someone's going to come along and say, you know, what we need to have is a, what we need to have is a, like a shop or a store application. You know, and anybody who's got anything to sell can can download that application, and he's got a, his instant store, and he can buy and sell in Safecoin. That's going to revolution. The guy who comes up with this simple thing for average ordinary people to do is going. It's going to just change everything, and that's what we want to do with Network Ninety Nine Studio Ninety Nine. Anybody? I don't, I don't want to direct the conversation too much. You were just talking about the stores. I, what I see Safe Network as doing is making it uh, an easy gateway to, like, Open Bazaar, which is about to uh, launch. I think in the next couple of three weeks or so. Um, and I, I'm not sure uh, if there it's a Bitcoin uh, setup or yeah, it is. They're all okay. It's so not? no, no. I, I think you're was. right. I think it is. You're right. But I also uh, these others, uh, BitShares. NXT, they're also they're doing marketplaces as well, and I'm not sure if they'll be set up quite the same. Uh, but I see uh, Safe Network as being like a gateway, a portal to all of these other uh, places where people can go and buy and sell with different currencies, different cryptocurrencies. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah I think I think what's going to end up happening is that uh, very smart guys who have the experience. Uh, we'll figure out how to create uh, altcoin exchanges that can trade in various different altcoins and uh, fiat yeah. currencies like you know the British pound or the US dollar if yeah, they're still if they're still around. <laughs> I think NXT is already doing a uh, an exchange of cryptos. And uh, yeah. So I think that I, you know, one of the projects uh, I I envisioned at the very beginning was a project called SafeX, which was that kind of an exchange. Yeah. Um, I can't do everything, so I I have sort of repurposed myself towards promoting the Safe Cafe in general and uh, Sweet Ninety Nine because both of those things are enough. For one man, so I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to do what I, I'm doing and invite others to join us. I want to plug plug our project since uh, it, it's it's not. I mean, listen, the Safe Cafe. I want to invite anybody who's got a project. You know, you got a project for the Safe Network. You come on the Safe Cafe and talk about it when you feel like you're ready to. Some people won't feel like they're ready to because they don't want to give it away because they think their idea is so novel. I, I challenge that idea generally, although people have a right to do what they want to do and when they want to do it. But whenever you feel, whoever's listening to this broadcast tonight, that you have a project or, 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 or an application um, that you're, you're working on for the SAFE network, one of the, one of the one of the basic purposes of the Safe Cafe is to put out that information to let people know what's going on in the crypto space of the Safe Network. Right now, it's a very curious time. <laughs> there is no crypto space of the Safe Network, so we're really pioneering that at this moment. But, like I said from the very beginning, the reason why I'm not afraid to talk about Suite 99, Studio 99, Network 99 is because I think that there is enough room in the infinite uh, cryptosphere of uh, the safe network for many such uh, projects. So uh, I think may th it's always been my attitude, may the best application win. Well, we, we, we said before, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's going to be, and, and I'm sure these boys can, will, will, will share this as well, that, that it's this very common thing that's shared by a lot of musicians. I mean, we were talking earlier on this afternoon about Scrupulous Pip, mm -hmm. and he's the same idea that it's such a, a thing that I think so many musicians and artists are going to jump on board this once they hear it, because they already have the, the, the mindset already, but just don't know it's there. I mean, it's, I, I, I'm sure 
I didn't know any of this was there until I heard about it. And once you hear about it, you're like, wow, man, how many other people are going to love this sort of stuff? And <laughs> because it's, you know, the, the, the same sh same struggles that are felt by these guys here, are felt by Rich, are felt, I felt by everybody around the world. And mm -hmm. it's, it, 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 you know, the, I mean, the, the, the lads were telling me this afternoon, just the, the effort they have to go through, the amount of, we were, even small things, we were saying, which one of the great things about the safety network, how, how many passwords do you have on the internet nowadays? We were talking about YouTube as a password, Facebook, and there's always different passwords. For, whereas the safety network, just a simple concept, you only have like two or four passwords to remember. These are the small little things that the, the world, once they hear about it, uh, it's, you know, people are going to flood towards it because they already want this. You know, they, we were saying last week they've been conditioned into thinking losing their anonymity. They've also been conditioned into understanding that that they have to follow this rule and do this and follow this password. And people don't think like that. I mean, I'm sure the boys will say that they don't they don't want that. That's not the world. They didn't grow up for the world. They don't, they don't not in the music for doing. You know, as we said before, for making YouTube and Facebook richer, they they just want to be like most musicians I ever speak to. It's just going out there, speaking from the heart, and telling what they want to express out. And this is a chance for for well for for bands like this, and even right up to people like Scrupulous Pitbull, they, who they've met and stuff, for to get their word out because it's you know. Right. I mean, you know I mean, I'm sure the boys would say exactly the same. I mean, I mean, tell 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 us what is what's it like? You you, you know? No, yeah, it's doing it independent. It's like yeah, so you you do sort of everything, you know, like uh, so from like videos to promotion to all all the you uh, put a lot in. You just put yeah, you, know, you put your heart and soul into the yeah. music, and you kind of do the same thing when it comes to getting it out there. Really, you know, it's 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 not. You've got to be like working on, you know. You've got to be a graphic designer. You've got to be promoting your gigs. You've got manager. to be your, ma your own manager, <laughs> doing all the jobs, all the social networks. So, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, man. Like, and when you you're doing, you're doing it all. You're doing it all for the love, man. The the, the artist, the, you know, that's what makes you do it, man. But um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 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 It's uh. Yeah, it's um, can be pretty can be pretty uh, exhausting to have to do everything. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to do, and you know um, that's why it's like a great idea because you can reach reach out to other people. You know, if there's a promoter in another part of the world or whatever. It's like uh, just getting those sort of connections. I think that's what this is all about. At the moment, it's growing, yeah. like getting people to hear it all. And, I want to uh, invite those who are watching. If you um, are uh, watching through the Hangout and you have access to the uh, text, your questions and comments block. block. Now, YouTube v viewers probably won't. I'm pretty sure don't have that. But if you're if you are watching the video through Google Hangouts, you should see a question uh, and answer column. And you can text your questions in. So if anybody's watching has a question or a comment, feel free. Um, and, and if you feel like it, tell us, tell us where you're, where you're um, viewing from. Uh, you don't have to... I'm not looking for a GPS location, folks. I'm just kind of got a interest in knowing, you know, maybe what part of the world or what state in the United States or what country you're uh, you're watching from. Now it looks like Tim. Tim, are you still here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what what I want what to happened to your what, what happened to your video, man? I'm something's gone on with it. Is it? Yeah. I don't. I don't see you moving. I see you like you're like frozen or something. And then, and then it's like blank. But go ahead and talk. I'll 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 put I'll put my face up and 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 the demons' faces up and Rich's face up while you talk. We'll just circ. I'll just circulate through. Go ahead I and mean, talk. I, I was I was I I would love Rich and and uh, personally the seed and demons to talk because I the idea that. But uh, uh, Rich was, was tapping on earlier on about the idea of his idea of sharing videos from from um, you know from 
set venues where you're saying like from a room or whatever. It was something we were talking about with the boys this afternoon was that with all people that, whether you're an, uh, like myself, an artist or a photographer or a musician, all you want to do is connect to people like, like Cy was just saying. And it's a great opportunity for this network to do that. Like, that's why I love Rich's idea that someone can watch who, who isn't have the ability to go and watch the boys live or see something live can actually sit in their front room. And I've, I think it's a I love Richard talk, sort of expand on that now because I've been he's, he's, he's tapped on in it and I think it's a really good idea and I'd love to hear more about his ideas on that because I think it's a very fascinating concept that <clears throat> that is, you know please talk about more. <clears throat> yeah, talk on it, Rich. Yeah, one of the things I envision is um, you know everybody's looking for promoters, uh, somebody to get them strong venues as they're traveling, uh, you know doing doing their tour. You know, if if you're coming from a small town, uh, you know, yeah, you're well known in your little town, but once you step outside of it, you know, it's really hard to get put in, on a on a decent sized venue where you're playing with ten bands or five bands. And imagine uh, a place on Safe Network where you can upload your, some of your live uh, productions. You can upload some of your polished studio productions and uh, also have on there where you are at the moment and you know if you happen to be on tour throughout Europe you can say here's a little bit of our schedule we will be in your area and you know this is the area we will be in over the next you know month and you know you like what we do you know call us and so I can see agents and and club owners and cafe owners uh, tapping into a service like this around the world you know saying hey who's gonna be in my general vicinity uh, and whose music I like, I can listen to it, and and then uh, almost have an auction type system set up. Wait, hey, I'll pay you X amount, and they say there's another club owner in the area says, oh no, no, I want them, I'll pay you this amount, and and then they can see it in real time. Oh, this person's willing to pay a hundred bucks more, uh, you know, or a hundred pounds more, whatever you're using. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, so I could see this just blooming in so many directions, but having a nice centered uh, place uh, or a central place like on a safe network where uh, these people can go to to hear new music and bid on having them come play. And hey, if they can't uh, get you live, they can say, well, I do have a few large screens in my cafe. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll pay them X amount so that I uh, you know, can give it to, or in some cases, just say, I'm also going to set you up. When you play live over here, you'll also be live at my cafe. So I can still advertise that in a way you'll be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and and, and, and it's like... Uh, I mean, it's just like so many win-win. I mean, I've never even conceived of what you just said. I think that is like, I mean, but you know, the thing is, is that, that that's intuitive. You can see when people act in their own self-interest and they get together and they do things that work, that work, uh, anything's possible, and it's wonderful. I just think that this is going to be an amazing, amazing thing. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about tonight was sort of. Um, what we thought about, you know, um, how, and I guess, Rich, I, I would like you to just mention this, and this will give other people ideas. Uh, I think this is important because other people are going to be in our position where they're going to wonder, they're going to have a great idea, maybe they're coders, maybe they're not, and they're going to want to know, well, I got this great idea, how can I get it off the ground? How can I get a team together? And what what is it going to take to put people together uh, to to do this to do this thing, sort of like in a grassroots way, um, you know, realizing that if we can just put it together, then uh, you know we've we we've got a great application and put it on the safe network and it's going to earn safe coin. I mean that whole concept. People need to get their head around that. What what are some of your ideas about getting together a uh, Anybody, and you know, Tim, you can you can chime in too. But what are some of your ideas about getting together a development team? Because I know the ceiling demons want to have this Network 99 up yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So it's revolutionary moments. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I see, uh, something that's becoming popular at different places, like uh, near my where I live, down in. Uh, um, well, it's not near relatively, but Austin, Texas has the South by Southwest, and they have hackathons there. And at all the major Bitcoin conventions, they're incorporating hackathons. So um, 
if you can get a bounty of some kind uh, where you say, or, and actually there are already bounties placed at these hackathons where for a weekend, three, four days, there will be, there will be a team competing for a prize to create a, an application. And so if you can get an idea that is solid and give it to these teams that are competing for the prize, um, they win the prize at the hackathon, and and they've created an app that's uh, you know at least solidly a good. It's not a, of course going to be polished and finished, but they'll have the general coding for the app if you can give them the general framework skeleton to begin with. Um, I think that's an opportunity is to and I don't know where all the major hackathons happen and I don't know who the best developers are but I think if you can have a place uh, maybe even a website that mm -hmm. uh, promotes the idea of these applications for the safe network and if there could be some kind of bounty set up uh, you know if it's in safe coin or anything else just to incentivize these developers to create the apps and use it as their app their uh, choice at these hackathons saying, you know, because ultimately Safe Network is going to accommodate all cryptos, of course. You know, sure. and not it's it's agnostic on right. crypto wise. And and um, so you know if they can create an application that does something really well uh, that lends itself to the Safe Network and we can create the skeleton for it where it gives them sort of a, a few steps ahead of most hackathons where people show up and they're kind of scratching their heads as to exactly how they're going to approach their idea. You know, hey, here's a pool of ideas, and if you can take one of these and run with it, you might win this nice prize here, but also uh, you'll be in on the ground floor with a, another uh, idea made, made safe. So Yeah, I think you got I think you got a good a good idea there. Uh, I know that uh, in the Bay Area, they're, they always have hackathons. Austin, Texas, to do Boston, um, up up by um, you know obviously up in Seattle, that area where there's so many um, people up that way, and where I where I'm at, Tel Aviv. Uh, I know they have in Montreal for that matter where uh, Francis is located. Okay. Um, people get together and do all kinds of, of, of... I mean, there's all kinds of people where there are concentrations of programmers. I was just listening to a podcast about some developers, and I think they were in Tel Aviv, and they were creating an application that sounded like it was similar to that ride-sharing program, but it, it was different in that it wasn't about profiting from picking somebody up. It was about saving uh, ultimately, like sharing rides, and oh. to where, hmm. and I, I forgot what it was called. It was something like Zeus, uh, Zeus. I don't know. I think it was a Hebrew word of some kind. Maybe I haven't. I haven't. I haven't heard of that. Although um, I'm happy to say that uh, there's a guy named David Shema who's the editor of the Times of Israel Startup Daily. He followed me the other day, so he's paying attention to what's going on in the Safe Network. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of talented programmers out this way. Uh, a lot of innovative ideas that are in a lot of applications and a lot of technology worldwide comes out of what we call over here Silicon Wadi because Wadi is the Arab, Arab word, Arabic word for valley. So, uh, you know, the west coast of the United States, San Francisco, San Jose, Bay Area, you know, Silicon Valley over here, it's Silicon Wadi. But there's talent everywhere. I mean, there, you know, this is, you know, coding talent, develop, development talent. It's, it's all over the world. In India, in China, they're, 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 especially India, a lot of talented developers come out of India these days. So I think our, our best chance at finding a great developer would be to create an outline, a, a white paper of sorts, uh, uh, for them to be able to look at and say, "Oh, here's precisely what they need." And because developing is a precise art, so they can say, I, "If I know precisely what they're looking for, I can create it." So laying down an idea, like you said, simple, a very simple idea to begin with, but be very precise about the parameters and, and what is needed, uh, then I think then that lends itself to a developer looking at it and saying, oh, I can do that. Well, I know that uh, Tim's busy creating some beautiful Network 99 art and to give us some uh, imagery. 
and then we I know that we talked about and we're we're in the process of working out on our our non-technical design team just the, the guys that are here right now who are uh, putting uh, putting together the ideas uh, uh, sort of what we call in the in the movie business I used to work in Hollywood we used to call this storyboarding and the way I've envisioned this and and it's it's not just it's not like my I've envisioned this. I mean, I do know for a fact that application developers storyboard too. So it's the idea of putting together the various func functions and functionality and web pages and you know buttons and things like that to give it a uh, a picture sense of what you want it to what you want it to be able to do. I can describe it. It's very, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. It's like ceiling, like for example, what we were talking about before. Ceiling Demon's got a gig over here. They take, they 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 upload it in real time through through uh, a broadcast uh, channel uh, of Studio 99, and it gets uploaded to the Ceiling Demons Network 99 music channel, where everybody goes to to listen to Ceiling Demons music, and uh, every time somebody uses that song and and here's a situation where the ceiling demons don't care or won't care or any artist won't care about you downloading their music for free because when you do they get paid safe coin from the network it's as simple as that and so the more free downloads that the fans of Ceiling Demons, when they got a million fans out there, and everybody's got to have that song, the new song that they just they just put out, that's that's safe coin income to them, and we'll code into the application in real time, no no difference. The application earns the money, and then it goes out into from one from the application's wallet, it goes to the artist's wallet, just and everything's transparent. You don't have to trust anybody. It's like everybody can go there and look look on the, you know, sort of what I would say. Anyone who's a member of the Safe Network Open Value Network, and you know, people have to get their head around the the new kinds of self aggregating communities that applications will be on this network. You know, you come you come into a situation like this as an artist, you're adding value to the community called Sweet 99. And so if you're a member of that community, you have the ability to, not everybody, but you do, because you're a member of that community. Not just, not, not, not a user, you do. You can get on there and go click on this and click on that and look and see um, how much safe coin the application earned a day and how much went, went to you. And all that's programmed in there in you know, in the light of day f for everybody to see. And uh, and it's just a beautiful, I think it's just a beautiful uh, way for people to uh, uh, make a living off of the art that they they create. And it just depends on how, how, how much demand is on is on that. If a guy if a guy creates an independent film and people think, you know, that that's a great film, they'll download it. If it if it stinks, they won't. Same thing with music. It's nobody can make people like stuff. It's whether or not people actually do that determines what people what people are going to what people are going to get. And I'm saying the, the great thing about that mindset of having what you just explained is that it gives someone who creates the ability to know instantly what is popular, what isn't popular. Do you know what I mean? And it makes them then want to generate more, it, mm -hmm. which, is, which is completely counterintuitive to the world we live in now. Because we were, talk, you know, like we were saying last night to so the bottom when we were talking that, well, you, you could be really lazy in the world right now, make one really lazy piece of art and never generate again. So it's going to be a really good open. It's, it's, it's all right for saying the, the the positives it's going to give to what we're we're trying to escape from, but it's opening up the possibilities of what this is going to do to people who are creative. Is it gives them the ability to 
Now, instantly, what is market driven rather than having it put through so many filters that they don't know? So, like, the boys would know that they can almost instantly judge what their tunes are like because at the moment they can play me some tunes and they play their friends and like, yeah, 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 that's great. But imagine that on a massive scale where they would know instantly in the world, ah, oh, that one the people like, that one the people don't like. But equally, they can put stuff up and generate if whatever. Because you never know. I mean, the great thing about, you've asked all musicians, and I asked Rich, I'm an artist, I can spend ages, I'll, I'll tell you a story about the ceiling demons, I spent months painting the Nelman album cover, and the one they used, I did it overnight. <laughs> now, that's, <laughs> now that's, that's the great thing about what we're talking about, because it gives you the, everybody that incentive. Like the demons, they might write a song and they may love it, but it may be the, the one that they don't think is great and the world picks up. And this is what this is going to be able to distribute this out, out out to everybody that the free market will decide rather than than filters and change and that's very appealing. I'm sure it is for the for Rich and I'm sure it is for the for the boys. It is for me. It's very appealing to know that I can have an instant ability to know what people are liking from me and also like like I do on Facebook, I can have an account of what I get. But if that's going to be bringing me me dollar, me revenue, me save coin, me something that's going to get me through life, that's a godsend. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, yeah, no more starving artists, I, I hope. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and the, and, and the bottom line is, is that I think the world is a better place when, you know, and I wrote this up this way. When I wrote, when I wrote my article on medium.com, and anybody who, who's listening if you want to really get your head around some of the ideas we're talking about, you should read some of the articles I've written on medium.com at Dave, slash at forward slash at David Lassoff. Um, when I wrote the piece on Network 99, it was like, I don't know how to put it, but it was like, you know, uh, just something came to me from heaven. <laughs> I don't know how to, uh, other way to put it. It's just that the idea that a parent could raise a child who was artistic and can you imagine the day when a parent doesn't tell his kid oh that's great and all that but remember you have to be practical in life and you need to go out and get a day job you need to you know you know learn 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 mathematics and and science and and that's great you know i'm not putting math and science down. I think that that's great that parents want their kids to learn math and science. But what do you do when you have an artistic kid who wants to just do nothing but play the piano? Ah, right. You exactly. know, wants to paint. Wants to wants to play with mud and 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 make pots, you know, or make music or any of these things. You know, in in the real world, the way it's been uh in the old real world, the way it's been uh Parents, you know, uh, were always afraid for their artistic children because they couldn't. Uh, some of them couldn't get their head around the idea that they should just let them flourish with their art because it wasn't very practical, or they they knew that they would struggle in life if all they did was paint or played music. Um, but I I think the I mean to me the vision of what Network 99 is about is about giving parents uh, you know getting getting them to rethink a little bit uh, about all that where hey well I don't have to worry about my kid my kid can actually he's got talent uh, you don't you know I I don't know how it's all going to play out but you know if if the future is that people can make a decent living Playing music, or 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 taking pictures, or making independent films—not necessarily getting rich, but just make a decent living. Not have you know, like they would any other kind of job in the world. Uh, the Safe Network and and Network 99 will uh, change everything for people. It is because I mean, we, 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 I mean, an example that I'm sure that I mean the boys can tell you more. But it, it, it people are, who are like in the bands and the musicians are, are so easily ripped off. I mean, they they, they get they, 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 the boys were telling me they went they did a show from all their house to Bristol, 
I didn't get paid a, a penny for it because the guy at the other end goes, oh, well, you've done the show now. He's got no incentive to pay to the boys, you know? There's no, at the other end, he, oh, you've done the show now. I was talking to a guy last night, and he, he, he does logos. And he says, the trouble is I, I write a logo, and then they've got the idea, and they just nick it anyway. <laughs> you know, and I, I don't, I'm not getting paid. Whereas this gives him a chance to get paid. I mean, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, tell us what you, you were saying last night about, you know, your, your trip to Bristol and about how, this must be very common for most bands and people that they, yeah, get, ripped, they get ripped off the other end, don't they? Yeah, man. Well, I guess it's like you have to invest a lot of your own time, energy, and money in, in, in these things. And it's a gamble, man, because you don't know, you know, you, you, you're not going to get paid. You know, you put you you travel in there, so you got all these costs and stuff. And particularly if you're going to like new areas and that, you don't you don't know what the that reaction's going to be. Um, and yeah, it's just it's literally like a struggle, man. At times, um, yeah, we went we did a show down in Bristol, and uh, yeah, we didn't like that cost us money. But I mean, we are, we have to put in. At this moment in time, we have to put in money to try and get something back, and that, and you know that you're you're going out, you you like so you're making your art and, and stuff, but you have to get it out there by um, put like investing your own money, and you're not getting a, a return really. That's why that's why the Safe Network and uh, is so like appealing really because the idea of, of you know just you're getting a return from your energy and your art that you're putting out there. It's like, yeah, that's, yeah. Well, I, I, I want, I want to take this moment to make an appeal to the ceiling demons to make sure that you plug the safe cafe to all mm. your fans so that they come, <laughs> come watch the YouTube video and watch you talk about the new future for artists because it's you guys that are going to change the world you know it's it's your your real world experience that that speaks to other artists that say I know how that is I experienced the same thing and what this can change that I better pay attention to what this is about I better really give this thing a, f a fair listen to, a, a real serious look-see. Because that's all, you know, listen, the end, of, the end of the day, here we are, pre-launch. Here we are, in the middle of what we call the test nets of a safe network. And as I said before the show starts tonight, I want to I wanna say it again on air because this is so important, I don't know how, I can't overstate this, but I want everybody who hears on a certain date in July, on July, <clears throat> on July the 12th, 2014, was a day like the Wright brothers in Kitty Hawk. And on that day, July the 12th, 2014, Testnet 1 of the Safe Network went live. Now, what does that mean? I'll tell you exactly what it means. On that date, 200 autonomous nodes on three continents without human beings doing anything, without network administrators touching anything, with the network itself autonomously, on its own, automatically, was storing and, and transferring data in, in, in a, an autonomous encrypted serverless network that's real on that date the safe network was literally born and there's a lot of work yet to be done and for the average person it won't be obvious that the network is obviously strong and obviously fast and obviously everywhere for quite a while so it's very important that people who get it about what it is we're up to find ways to explain it to others and help them t tell them where to go to find out more information hang out in the safe cafe listen to listen to these guys talk and then go on to madesafe.net and read about it 
go uh, on to madesafe.org and listen and and uh, read some of the stuff that people are talking about. Um, talk to your friends. Go to go to my blog, the Safe Network blog, at medium.com forward slash at David Lassoff, and pay attention to the. We just had a lot of people may not know this, but David Irvine, who is the CEO of MadeSafe, and uh, Nick Lambert, who is the chief operating officer, just appeared on the Max Kaiser show. Uh, two segments of it actually, two days in a row, and explained made safe to the world. And uh, last count, there was over 40,000 views of that of those two shows. So we're reaching a point where people are becoming aware of the Safe Network. But again, bringing it back to earth, it's going to be the artists and the musicians and the filmmakers, in my opinion, that are going to make the big impact, reaching out to others and say, you know, you know, I mean, I can see it in Hollywood, you know, independent filmmakers sitting around there drinking coffee at a cafe, waiting on tables, and, and you know, there's 100,000 of those people that have made independent films and never made a penny off of anything they ever did. And these are great films. These, I'm telling you right now, in, in, these people, if they could just upload their independent film to a channel that would pay them for what they did. Now, again, you know, you don't need the whole world to watch your movie, but what would it mean if you had a million people watch your, watch your movie? if you were an independent filmmaker? What would it mean for the Ceiling Demons to have a million fans, wor not, not a billion, just one million? One million. <laughs> okay, now that seems like a big number, but when you think about it in, the, in terms of what the world is about, you know, a million people in the English-speaking world um, is not a lot of people. If the music's great, they should be able to... You know, it's the same old story. It really is. The Safe Network, when it gains traction, will just be like a good movie, like a great album. It'll just be somebody going, dude, you got to see this. You got to hear this. That's all it ever is. It's all it's ever going to be. And if the music resonates, if the movie or the film resonates, or the artwork or the photography or, or the game, maybe new future games, you know, these kinds of things. Whatever it is the art that you can do with digital technology, if it resonates, it'll it'll you know, people will do it. Especially when especially when it's completely flat and there's nothing that prevents that. Or there's nothing where there's a guy standing there in the middle of saying, I gotta get my cut. When those days are over, when it's just between the artist and the lover of art, and there's nobody standing in the middle. <coughs> the world, the world as we know it, will be completely different. I've talked enough. Who's yeah, no, I, I agree with it. Like, and I think, I think it's you know, it's, it's very important to get artists on board as well because they can, like, we, like now we're on board with, like, we know what the gist is of the whole safe, safe network. We can, we can push that on. To like our fan base, you know, we can promote it, and I, we we we're friends with other bands and stuff like that. If I tell some of my mates and other bands about it, they can push it onto their onto their fans as well. It's all about just sort of growing the word, spreading the word at this sort of stage, I think. And I think artists and, and you know, it's it, great. It's good to get people on board. where you have got a fan base to push things to to push it even further. You know, it's it's a, it's a ripple effect, and it's like. You know, it's a droplet in, in in the water, and you watch it, you watch it ripple, and that's what it's just getting it out there, really. Oh, and right. Well, well, you guys, Dan and Cy, I need you to stand in this moment <laughs> and recognize who you are. You I want you to understand this. I don't want you this moment to go by without you guys getting it. You guys are the first artists uh, who are in the position to actually do this. You guys are the pioneering artists in this movement called adoption of the safe network and it, you know 
getting the safe network, the knowledge of the safe network out there. You guys, you two guys right here, right now, tonight on Safe Cafe number seven are the first two musicians and I'm just, you know, I'm just tickled pink, pink by that and 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 because of that, um, um, I I have to I have to say something else that um, you know is probably a little stupid, but we we like to we like to have a little fun around here. So congratulations. <laughs> No, and 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 to and to you, Rich, you you're a member of our team. You're you're part of the design team of Network 99, but you're also a photographer, and you you know you bring that whole perspective to this. And uh, you may not know this, Rich. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to get sidetracked by this, but I was involved uh, in a previous life. <laughs> I like to say uh, helping uh, uh, a some really great photographers uh, start a a digital photography school, and uh, so I'm not a photographer. I was just helping them with the logistics of all of that. So, but what I got out of that was an appreciation for the for for the fact that photographers are a pretty special breed. They are artists in their own right, and they uh, have a way of expressing that art that's uh, unique to the world so it's really you know it's nice to have you nice to have you here it means a hey. lot I yeah. was thinking um, oh there's a uh, you, you've probably noticed that on uh, Bitcoin there's been several artists that have come out with songs about Bitcoin right have you heard them yeah I've, I've heard of it but I haven't actually I haven't actually heard heard any of the songs but I've heard of this what well, one's called ode to ode to Satoshi, and it's really it, that one's a funny one. Uh, uh, there's another one, uh, uh, Uptown. Instead of Uptown Girls, she's a Bitcoin girl. Uh, the, there's another one. Uh, there's, I think, there's three or four right now. So I'm just putting it out there. Uh, it, it would be pretty cool to be the first musician to do a maid safe. Yes, uh, <laughs> hey, there you go, man. Come on, <laughs> demons. Just have one. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. I mean, what, what I find fascinating, I was, I was saying, I've said this week after week. Isn't it, here we are, made, made, you know, Safe Cafe Number Seven. We've got two musicians from Yorkshire. We've got a photographer from America. We've got myself as an artist from from uh, living in Scotland. And and we're the ones here, and we're the ones shaping the world. And if that isn't something good to feel good about in this world, then nothing is. That is, and I do feel good. Here you go. <laughs> and you know what else? Uh, I just want to say once again, you viewers that are viewing this, feel free to um, uh, just you can ask a question. I know we're running it. We're, we got still about still got about 20 minutes, 22 minutes or so of, of our broadcast. If you have a question, feel free to write one, text one, text one in, and also if you feel like it, tell us where you where you are where you are at in the world because uh, we are getting a uh, an audience at least on two hemispheres so I think, I think the great thing that it sort of like corroborates what we're saying is that me and Richard have sort of spoken before and the great thing about we, you'll find amongst like all three of us on here tonight is that we're all used to sharing I remember Rich saying to me that feel, feel free to use one of my, my uh, photos for, for yourself I know I, I know I'm the same. I know the, the, the boys are the same. So maybe in this spirit, we should all just do something together. We should all cooperate. The artists, the photographer, and the musicians. <laughs> I'm sure we can come up with something. <laughs> man, that would be great, man. That would be awesome. I mean, I, I speak personally, but I know that a lot of what the, 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 the demons talk about, their lyrics, are, are so resonant of what we, what, we, what we all sort of stand for. So, you know, let's, let's you know... Safe Cafe number seven tonight. We, we're putting the line in the sand. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, gee, you know, um, if if you guys uh, want to come back sometime, you 
you ceiling demons, you and uh, <laughs> and, and 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 perform on the safe cafe. Yeah, we uh, can do that. I'm sure that's <laughs> that would idea. be that would be cool just to hear you hear you hear a live uh, rendition of whatever whatever ever ever whatever you wanted to do, you know. Yeah, man, nah, for, for real, we can do that. We'll yeah. Insult, you know. yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because, you know, I think that as time goes on, you know, I want to thank uh, Bus Bart. Uh, Bus Bart is uh, one of the guys who I sometimes uh, chimes in a comment or two on Google Plus on when we advertise the Safe Cafe. And Bus Bart came up with the idea that we should perhaps consider segmenting the show with news and entertainment and uh, different things. Uh, it might be a good idea. And yes. so we're, we're thinking about how to, you know, we're always thinking about how to improve the show. And uh, uh, all I can say is, an, uh, I don't mean to, you know, I don't, it's kind of a lame apology, but, you know, uh, I just woke up one morning and decided to do this. I'm not a, I'm not a professional, and and uh, you know it's sort of like uh, I don't have any production crew behind me, or or, or Tim and I, Tim and I are, are on, you know, I'm in Asia and he's in Scotland. So thank you Google Plus uh, for all all the all the technology that we use here. But uh, hopefully, as time goes on, our our little um, uh, basic safe cafe will turn into something a little bit more professional and artistic. Uh, that would be a really that would be a really cool cool development over time. I think. I mean, I I I, I would I would love to, and I, I mentioned this when I first came to the safe cafe. I would love at some point in the future to get a a, a festival going. The, you know, where we start the night in the 99 festival, where we get artists, photographers, filmmakers, and we have an actual live performance, and we can all meet each other rather than turn on Google Plus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be cool. Then we can uh, we could all be together and then uh, maybe broadcast it. You know. Well, the only thing is, it's got to be it's got to be in Richie's part of the world. We're not coming to Scotland. We're all coming to America. New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Have plenty of property here. <laughs> exactly. You got the heat. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All you need is a tent and a pillow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's it. We, we're doing your back garden. You look yeah, nice. Is, is that your back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if my horse Kai would pops up every now and then or not. But <laughs> I have, uh, and the quail and the chickens. And <laughs> are you but I, I, I say it in jest. I say it in jest, but I think it could happen because I I truly think that a lot of bands, from talking to to, to bands as I do, I I've, I've been saying before, I think they're going to flood into this, and that it could well, be a real you know a real possibility that we could actually have like in a year's time some really big stand up artists coming along and saying we were here first and we were you know. I think uh, I I would I mean it'd be great if we could. We could do this every week, you know, a different, uh, different band or different artist, oh, different. Exactly. That'd be awesome. So, uh, go for it, go for it, you guys, and uh, put the word out and let people know in whatever, uh, whatever circles you're in, and uh, you know, um, you know, it's starting to gain a little bit of traction. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day. And we're trying to do something here that's never been done before. I mean, really, you know, we're promoting something that, that almost yes, it exists. It actually does exist in the world. It's not a fiction. It's not a story. It's not make believe. The safe network exists. But helping people to get their head around it, there there are challenges to that, and it is just. And somebody died. No, everybody's still here. We're well, look at that. Everybody's still here. Um, the challenges, the challenges of getting the, getting the word out, and 
the the network itself getting traction are real, but uh, you know I don't know. I just get excited by by the possibilities of it, and and also uh, being here at this stage it, to me it seems to be such a privilege. How come it ended up being how did how it ended up that I got here and doing this? I haven't a clue, so don't ask me. You know, it's just uh, there's no I don't I don't have any explanation for it. But it's it does feel like it does feel like a privilege, and uh, and I've gotten to know a little bit. Um, hey, you know those people may not know this, but uh, Tim's Tim uh, just came uh, recently. He ha he had a nice visit up in. Uh, well, he's he doesn't live in Scotland. He doesn't live too far from Troon, where the headquarters of MadeSafe is. So Tim just recently uh, himself uh, visited David Irvine and the guys in the guys in Troon in their uh, in in the headquarters. So uh, I don't know if you want to mention it. I know we talked about it last week, but maybe for those people who didn't catch the Safe Cafe Number Six, you could. Say a few words about that, Tim. Um, as I was saying last week, it was uh, I found it a really, truly inspiring day in my life, really, and I, it will be put down that as the day in my life because I, I've, I've said it a many times. You know, I, it's something I've been wanting for twenty years, and I've been kind of banging out the same drum for twenty years. So to walk into a room where I met people who. Well, I, to be honest, the guy who, whose idea it was and the people building it of the world that I've been kind of banging on for 20 years about, was, it was inspiring because I kind of, for the first time, even um, since I've, you know, I've been doing what I'm doing, is, it was like, this is a solution that we can actually do. And to walk into a room and have people of, sort of saying, it's all right, talking on like this, hangouts, but actually meeting someone face to face and seeing people and human beings, that human beings are doing this, you know, that human beings are building something and that these are human beings and they have the same thought processes as, as, as all, it was great because I think a lot of times you hear this, especially with Bitcoin, it's like, it's all very, we don't know who, you know, who, who invented it, it's all very deliberately kept in the quiet, but to go and meet the man and shake his hand and say, wow, you know, thank you because you've given me something that I can actually now build upon rather than just banging my head against the wall and getting frustrated and, and trying to do stuff. And it was a very inspiring day. They're very good. They're, I, would, I, would, I would say that it's the way of the future. I was saying, me, me and David were talking through the week, it's, it's going to be the future of all companies. All companies are going to be like this. It's going to be, you're going to walk into most companies in the future and there's going to be no boss, no leader, everyone just doing for their own things for what it is and it's kind of what it's, it's almost it's kind of funny really because it's exactly the way that people who are in you know get kind of like the boys in, in the band when you're in a band there is no leader but you all do it for the self interest of what you're trying to do and to see that scaled up into an office environment was, it was inspiring and it was a, I, the one thing I think me, me and David both agreed on is that net, between now and when this is actually launched is crucial and they need to be left alone to work hard on, on getting this bit through. And I'd, I would say to anybody, I mean, contact them. Find, I mean, these are, they're very approachable people. And if you have any questions, whoever you are, if you're a coder or you're a developer or you're just a, the average person who stick on because ceiling demons are here, <laughs> like with all things in life, learn for yourself. Don't, don't take my word for it. Don't take Rich's word for it. Don't take David's word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Read up yourself. Check yourself and learn more because it's crucial. It's crucial you learn more about life. And if you've got any questions and any queries, go and talk to them. They're very approachable lads, even though they are Scottish. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nick Lambert wears currently wears two hats. He's the chief operating officer, and he is in charge of public relations. So... Anyone who's a member of the press who's watching this show, or anybody, you can always send him an email. Uh, it's on the it's on the uh, madesafe.net website, and uh, he'll get back with you. Although I think he's a pretty busy lad these days. Um, ever since yeah. the Max Kaiser broadcast, he seems to be taking a lot of uh, 
a lot more a lot more uh, things on his own, and letting David Irvine uh, finish uh, getting this thing to launch. So that's, that, that's to be fair, yeah. as, as as we as we both know, David, that's only become more and more. I mean, it, yeah. I, I've, I've, I said to David Owen and, and, the, and the team up there, you lot aren't going to be able to walk around the streets in five years' time. You're going to be national celebrities, especially in Scotland, because Scotland's based on a, on a, on a, on a nation of freedom. And to have people yeah. who actually come from Scotland and give them the world freedom, they ain't going to be able to walk around Scotland anymore. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, he probably hate me for saying this, but uh, Irvine, if you're listening... Too bad. Uh, <laughs> there probably hasn't been a Scott as famous as uh, that will be uh, quite as famous as David Irvine will become since William Wallace. Uh, I think they both had that that uh, you know that love of freedom running through their veins, and uh, I appreciate that about Irvine. He's uh, He's the kind of guy that uh, basically says, uh, "I don't care what people think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna seize my freedom," and that's really, you know, I want to say that, you know, that's what this whole idea about the 99% revolution is, is about: is saying we're not asking anyone's permission; we're just taking our freedom back, whether exactly. the authoritarians and the brutes and thugs who support them like it or not. I mean, they don't like it. They won't like it. Too bad. After this thing launches, there's going to be nothing they can do about it. And the world's going to change when more and more people peacefully, effectively, and unstoppably opt out of authoritarian regimes, whether they're weak or strong. And listen, I've I've been around the block. I know the difference. There are you know you have you have the totalitarians of the world. Uh, yeah, and they're very obviously totalitarian and authoritarian, and they, they, you know, at the at the point of a gun and in the bloodshed of innocent people, they force people to do things that are uh, horrible and uh, dis and they're despicable, and they uh, are all about where anybody can see. Um, taking away people's freedom and privacy and security. But, you know, those of us who grew up in the West under so-called Western democracy are less inclined to think that we grew up under authoritarian regimes. I assure you, when you wake up, and I hope you do soon, if anyone who's listening to me isn't awake, uh, you'll, you'll know that uh, authoritarianism is alive and well in places like the United States and Great Britain. And uh, <laughs> and and uh, isn't it right, Tim? Are, there's more security cameras per square inch in London than probably any city in the world. Well, we, but, we were we were saying earlier on today that England's one of the most surveilled countries in the whole country, in the whole world. Yeah. And we and we were saying, like you were saying earlier, on, there's, there's people don't even realise it. They've just been born into it. <laughs> they just don't get it. And no. uh, it's the same for Americans. We think we th we think we think. If we're Americans, we think we think because we've been told we grow up in a free society. But the truth of the matter is, in America, people, most people don't know how to think because they're only, they're only propagandized to buy this or buy that or buy this idea or buy that idea. And, again, to think outside the box and say, my life is my own. You don't own me, Mr. Government. You don't own me. Mr. Authoritarian, your your autocratic and bureaucratic rules don't apply to me. As soon as I can opt out of your regime, I'm going to do it. And that's all we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, blowing up buildings or, you know, blood in the streets. That's that's for idiots. That's for, that's nonsense. None of that none of that stuff can change the world. If you're a real freedom lover and you're really somebody who believes in privacy and security uh, violence has to be something that you just you can't buy into you can't say that the end justifies the means that somehow something good can come out of killing innocent 
people for some some greater good or controlling the lives of people you know or that you know somehow it's okay for me to believe that other people shouldn't control my life but it's okay for me to opt into things where uh, I end up getting co-opted into controlling other people's lives that that that's not freedom that's not liberty that's not um, that's the world as that's the world as we know it, and it's almost ending because of the coming of the of the safe network. I believe. I don't. I don't believe I'm overstating that either. By the way, I think I think people right now who haven't really thought it through, I don't blame them. But I want to go on record as saying that I truly believe that the safe network is far more disruptive to the status quo than people have any idea yeah. and when it is launched it's going to change everything as we know it it's the end of the world as we know it so I encourage everyone to feel fine and seize your freedom privacy and security I don't mean to make a speech but that's really where I see it can I just put a call out as well that um, and I'm, I, I want the, the boys to tell us more about it, but we're they're playing and I'm sure they know the dates better than me they're playing a day in Amsterdam coming up soon and I know I've had a few contacts through people that, so I'm going to call out to all the people in Holland. If you want to see the boys face to face and come and talk to me about what we're doing, we're going to be in Holland. And I'm, boys, tell what what date is you playing in Holland? It's the fourth of uh, October. It's Saturday in Amsterdam. So no, come across and see us. Yeah. The, the the did you say the fourth of October? Yeah. The fourth of October. Yeah. Fourth. Okay. Where where's the venue? Oh. <laughs> okay. You listen. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to. You make sure you get that venue to Tim. Obviously, he'll know it. Tim, you can put that out later on, anytime on this on the Safe Network. Uh, to anyone who's in a band who who wants to appear on the Safe Network, if you love freedom, if you're like-minded with us, and you want to want to reclaim your own privacy. Security and freedom. Uh, I I, pre I invite you to come on the Safe Network, and we'll do our best to we'll do our best to plug all your venues, and uh, 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 that that was that looked good on you. That looked good yeah. on you, Rich. Those sunglasses, man. That was yeah, cool. Man. Man. <laughs> awesome, man. Look at those. Look at those effects. I didn't know you guys could play with effects on your end. You, Look you at that. Added it. <laughs> awesome, man. Know, you you and, added it, and I, I didn't know what it was, and then I figured, I thought I was going to be putting it on your head. But it's, wow, that's cool. <laughs> that's awesome that you can do that. Feel free to, um, feel free to uh, play around with special effects because uh, anything goes on the safe network and uh, yeah but I was, all I was going to say was uh, you know we'll if uh, bands who come on the on the safe net on the safe on the safe cafe uh, we'll do our best to plug any of your stuff forever so ceiling demons whenever you got a gig make sure you let Tim know yeah. any other bands let let Tim know he'll We'll we'll have us maybe we'll have a special segment and tonight you if you're if you're in Amsterdam go see the ceiling if you're in London go see so and so if you're wherever go see the whoever will not be telephone this one it's got her own stuff that's cool well we got about we got about two minutes I just before we wrap up I just want to thank Dan and Cy from the Ceiling Demons. Thank you guys for being on on our show tonight. And uh, we hope to have you back and give us yeah. a live performance someday yeah. soon. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I want to want to thank Rich Beer from New Mexico, who taught me tonight that you can play with special effects. That's cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, I mean, this 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 thing keeps getting better and better, and uh, that's the safe cafe. It's a place where we hang out and hang loose and have a good time. And so, I look forward to working with you, Rich, as we develop 
the new Network 99 uh, website and and uh, garner our our uh, development team from wherever we get them. Um, thanks for being part of that that and part of the show. And you come back too, okay, Rich? Sounds good. All right. And Tim, once again, and my good and yeah, you know, Tim. Tim's really the brains behind this program. <laughs> I want you to know that. If it wasn't for Tim, man, we'd be bored to death. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tim, thanks for thanks for being my co-host, and thanks for having the, the the demons on tonight. Appreciate that you working that out. And uh, from for the rest of you that were viewing tonight, thanks for watching. And I want I have one last announcement, and I want you to really pay attention. The Safe Cafe will be on every Sunday night at seven o'clock British right now British summer time. So basically, if it's seven o'clock in the evening, no matter what what the time changes, however that goes, if it's seven o'clock in the evening in the UK, we're going to be broadcasting, and we hope to add more shows to give America prime time on the week. West and East Coast, and uh, but we're going to let that develop naturally. Where we are right now is you can count on the Safe Cafe every Sunday night, seven o'clock in the UK. We'll advertise it on Google uh, Hangouts, and if you just uh, you know if you if you have Google uh, Hangouts or Google Plus, the announcement will change the time in your time zone to where you're located, and so. And if you miss the Safe Cafe, any episodes, it's always on YouTube on my channel, David Lassoff's, and uh, you can watch it there on the YouTube. And again, from the Startup Nation, I thank you uh, for being here tonight on the Safe Network, on the Safe Cafe with us. We'll see you next Sunday. So be here or be square. See ya. Bye. Tim, hang out.